Right, in this video, we'll be talking about irradiation and contamination. And um, the point of the video is to define both terms, be able to explain the differences between them, be able to compare them, and then think of your own analogy to teach it to someone else. If you've got any questions and it's a remote lesson, add them to the question document, or if it's uh, a normal lesson, bring any questions you have to the lesson. Remember to use the pause button um, and make summary notes as you wish. So here we go, irradiation and contamination. Irradiation is defined as the process of exposing an object to nuclear radiation. And the really, really important thing here is that the irradiated object does not become radioactive. So you can be exposed to radiation and then the source of radiation is taken away and you're no longer exposed to radiation. But if we look at contamination, the with contamination that it's the unwanted presence of materials containing radioactive atoms on another material. So um, you can't get away from the um, radioactive materials because they're on you. Okay, so here the hazard comes from the decay of the radioactive atoms and those decay uh, particles can be alpha, beta or gamma. So let's have a look an at an example of irradiation too. Here's a strawberry, yum yum. And here, this orange bit here, is a radioactive material that is emitting radioactive decay particles as it decays and it's in this protective casing that we were seeing in the lessons. So here you can see the decay particles. So here we would say the strawberry is being exposed to uh, radiation here, so it is being irradiated. So a couple of things to remember. Um, the hazard of irradiation is due to the type of radiation. Um, and that could be alpha, beta or gamma. And obviously we've already talked about the different hazards posed by those different types of radiation. And it's also down to the size of the dose. Now, remember, we've defined the dose that we we're exposed to before as a measure of risk um, to harm resulting from an exposure of the body to the radiation. So here, the strawberry, we're not very worried about the strawberry because it's going to get eaten quite soon. So we wouldn't worry about the dose of radiation radiation that the strawberry is receiving but we this is why we wouldn't for example wash our hands by exposing ourselves to radiation because we would then be constantly receiving a dose a uh, dose you don't need to remember that it's measured in sieverts but it's always good but you do need to remember that one sievert is equal to a thousand millisieverts and then the final thing to say is that if you're irradiating something so for example here we're irradiating the strawberries we always need to make sure that suitable precautions um, are being taken to protect from the hazard of the source used. So here we've got it in a little case. Hopefully no one would be touching it. Um, if anyone was working here, they depending on the source, they might be behind um, a lead screen if it was gamma, for example, things like that. But really, really, really important to remember, after this strawberry has been irradiated, it is not radioactive. We eat the strawberry, it's super tasty, and it's all fine. But what if someone irradiating these strawberries was being ridiculously silly? Let's talk about contamination and think about a, a, a terrible, a very unlikely what if scenario. So here I've got my strawberry and I've got my radio radioactive material here. Someone wasn't following any precautions and they started moving the source of the radioactive material too close to the strawberry. Uh oh, the radioactive source is now on the strawberry. The strawberry has been contaminated. This is a nightmare. Our strawberries are contaminated. So here, really important. The hazard from contamination comes from the decay of, of the radioactive material and it varies with alpha, beta and gamma. So depending on how you've been contaminated and what sort of decay particle you're going to be exposed to, the, the hazard will vary. So, for example, we know that alpha particles can't travel through bits of paper. So if you've got alpha particles on, for example, your skin, 
that the hazard there wouldn't be ridiculous because the decay particles couldn't travel through your skin and expose your sort of the internal part of your body to radiation that was really ionizing because it was alpha however if the alpha particles had contaminated your fingers and you then put your fingers in your mouth then the alpha particles would be inside you and then um things like your your internal organs are very soft and can get ionized very easily are being exposed these really really ionizing alpha particles that even though they can only travel short distances are really damaging and ionizing so assessing the hazard um with contamination uh you need to take lots of different things into account but it varies right so i've come up with an analogy to help you understand the difference between contamination and irradiation my analogy involves glitter here is some glitter here is some glitter. There's actually glitter everywhere, but we'll get to that in a second. In my analogy, seeing glitter is like being irradiated. Okay, so at the moment I can see glitter. Everywhere I go in my house, I can see glitter. Um, I have to take really sensible precautions to keep uh, everyone in the household safe um, during the process of irradiation. So the glitter pots live in this little sealed tube here. It's got a lid on it. I then put the box with the lid on in this box here, and then I close it up like this to prevent untrained personnel getting hold of the glitter. Uh, if you have a look in these photos here, on the floor here, you can see there's been some sort of um, glitter issue. And so when I go outside, I'm constantly exposed to glitter, which means I'm being irradiated. Uh, there's lots of beautiful pictures hanging on my wall. And I don't know if you can see in here, but they've got glitter on them. So I'm constantly irradiated, uh, exposed to seeing glitter. Uh, when I walk around my kitchen and there's quite a lot of glitter on my floor that never seems to be able to be swept up as well. Um, so wherever I go in my house, I feel like I'm being irradiated by glitter. Now you can see as well that I take sensible precautions when other people are playing with glitter. Here's a little apron so that people that are using the glitter don't get contaminated. But sometimes when I'm tidying up, I get contaminated with glitter. Now the glitter's on me. Oh no, it's terrible. Will it ever come off? It's really hard to wash off the glitter. So now the the glitter is on me, so I've been contaminated. So I'm constantly being exposed to the sight of glitter because I've been contaminated with the glitter. So things for you to try next. Make sure you can define the terms irradiation and contamination. Try and explain them to somebody. You can compare them. You could use a, a Venn diagram situation like this. Things that they've got in common in the middle, things that are different there. Think about um, the hazards, uh, the type of radiation they give out, um, all sorts of things like that. And then see if you can create your own analogy. It could be loads better than my glitter analogy, but that's just what I'm facing a lot of at the moment with the homeschooling. I hope you're all well, look after yourself, and I'll see you soon.